Austin Morris already had a highly successful small car, the legendary Mini. Although it was competing against a new generation of super minis from other manufacturers, bigger cars that offered hatchback versatility, none of them had ever managed to match the brilliance of Mini's original concept. Unlike other manufacturers who were committed to new model projects conceived before the oil crisis, Austin Morris could approach their new small car in the light of world events. The Advanced Engineering Department at Longbridge, birthplace of many successful vehicles, including Mini itself. The brief for the new car, codenamed ADO88, was simple enough. Design a high-quality vehicle that preserved the best of Mini's features, but adds more versatile interior space and more refinement to outclass the benefits offered by other Super Mini hatchbacks. That's right, yes. We've got a good fuel tank capacity for the car. The engineer's skills in creating the maximum usable interior space within compact exterior dimensions had already earned them an outstanding reputation with the rest of the world's motor industry. And true to form, they came up with a spectacular layout package. And calibration of the gauge, but we have a skin. And there's a little bit more roundness in the body side. The new car was always planned to be about the same size as the Mini it was intended to replace. A concept that proved to be a real challenge for the company's body stylists. Yeah, that, that's looking better. Yeah, that looks yeah. fine. I think the back could do with a little bit more roundness in it. The eventual body style that developed was extremely neat, highly functional and highly individual. An important factor when most small cars were beginning to look pretty similar. We must start on the 1st of October. From the very beginning, there was a clear agreement that the new car would have to be a quality vehicle. And a quality car needs quality manufacturing facilities. Plans were put in hand to turn Longbridge into the most up-to-date and quality-orientated car plant of its kind in Europe. Another early decision was not to develop a completely new power unit for the car. After exhaustive performance and economy tests, where the company's own engines were assessed against the competition, the engineers had still found that the A-series was potentially the best unit. There were several important advantages. The A-series was simple, basically reliable and very compact, leaving more space for the passenger cell. But what really counted was that the oil crisis had revived the potential economy with performance of long-stroke engines. The engineers believed that by completely redesigning the unit from top to bottom and by incorporating the latest components and manufacturing techniques, they could create a new engine every bit as good as the competition. The objective, maximum performance, maximum reliability, maximum quality, and minimum fuel consumption. 1975, and the first prototypes began to appear on secret tracks all over Europe. For two years until 1977, the development engineers had an equally simple brief, to make ADO 88 the most thoroughly tested car of its kind in the world. ADO 88 was a minor miracle in personal transport. Incredibly spacious for its size, outstanding in performance, road holding, maneuverability. But the company's forward planning experts had recognized a new need for a small family car, in addition to many, for the 80s and beyond. With its huge interior, ADO 88 was already a long way toward meeting that need. There was only one sensible decision to take. Retain the best-selling Mini as a personal small car and redesign ADO 88 to cater for the family owner. And so ADO 88 was changed. I think these radios and the, the softness is coming along a tree. The designers began again. By making the car slightly larger, Metro, as eventually it would be christened, could provide substantially more passenger space than any of its competitors, some of which were nearly two feet longer. It also gave the stylists a chance to develop their ideas still further. Working round the clock in shifts, they managed to rescheme the new body shape far quicker than anyone could have imagined. 
I don't know what there is about this line, but it doesn't look quite right. Uh, is it it's it's doubtful whether any other car maker could have implemented well, such a major decision in so short a time. But enthusiasm began to grow as people realized that this time they were onto something really special. It's very smooth right the way through. So what I suggest you do is take four or five points down here. Well done. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. Shall we deal with exterior detail first and then come on to yeah. you? And the optimism was justified. Metro had become something of a revolutionary concept in car design. The very first Ultra Mini. A small, fuel-conscious vehicle with such a massive interior that it could be genuinely called a true family car. I see you're using the existing service tool, Dave. Any problems with that? No, in fact, it's identical. Metro was also planned to keep the eventual cost of ownership to an absolute minimum. 12,000 mile servicing had been a target set in the earliest days and the service department recommended many modifications and special components which were incorporated in the design program. Quite easily removable. Even before the styling of the new car was finally approved, the detailed structural design work had begun at pressed steel fissure. The body's perfect master model, handmade by PSF's own craftsmen, was minutely measured to provide all the information required. Modern technology that completes in hours a job that used to take weeks. As pioneers of computer-aided design techniques in body manufacture, PSF had a dozen years of experience and the sophisticated software programs to rapidly analyze the potential weight, strength, and stiffness of the new body shell. Every curve and contour of every panel eventually reduced to holes in a punched tape to guide the die cutting machines. Die making. The objective, simply perfection. A massively expensive process that in spite of the most modern techniques still depends in the end on a craftsman's skills for a flawless finish. In spite of the enormous pressures to get Metro into production, every stage of development so recently completed on ADO 88 was undertaken again. The aerodynamic properties of the full-size body, a major consideration in the styling program, had to be wind tunnel tested for stability, wind noise and drag to verify the results achieved with earlier small-scale model tests. The program finally showed that Metro's ability to glide smoothly through the air was exactly the same as a Porsche, a benefit that promised to make the most of the power unit's fuel-saving potential. Even though a large part of the early development work on ADO 88 was relevant to its successor, the company was taking no chances in its efforts to see that the new car would be as trouble-free as it was humanly possible to make it. We're free from all technical problems. Yes, all and, and brought up to the latest mod are all been incorporated, oh. yes. Yeah, we'll that, check it from the inside there. That yeah. looks very tidy, doesn't it? Yeah. Money was allocated to build a further 70 vehicles for the continuing test program. But the extensive proving vehicle build meant that the production engineers and quality experts had an even greater opportunity to check the proposed manufacturing techniques, assembly sequences, and inspection procedures. Quality had become a mania. Every vehicle was scrutinized down to the smallest detail by experts just looking for the slightest sign of trouble. Potential problems were spotted and solutions found long before they had any chance of appearing in volume production vehicles. Oh, yes, I see what you mean, the hole through the weld, yeah. There, there is an offset to this tailgate to the right. 
As more metro bodies became available, many were allocated to sections of development engineers to do their worst. In the workshops and laboratories, technicians devised the strangest contraptions to check every aspect of the car, putting metro, and sometimes themselves, through operational tests far more severe than reality. And if a test needed to go on day and night for months, then they made sure it did exactly that. But the ultimate trial of a body's strength is the barrier crash test, a meeting between an expensive prototype and 30 tons of solid concrete at 30 miles an hour. To design a small car is difficult enough to design a small car that can absorb the same dynamic forces as a much larger vehicle and still leave the passenger compartment intact is very difficult indeed. Carried out under the supervision of engineers from the Department of Transport, a barrier crash test is compulsory for all new vehicles. schoolboy's dream with a serious motive. In the event, the body engineers and the computer had got their sums exactly right. In spite of the huge impact, the backward movement of the steering column was less than three quarters of an inch well within the five-inch legal requirement. In only a split second, Metro had cleared another safety check on the road to the showroom. And the trials weren't even over. Side impact tests confirmed the high level of safety with passengers protected by immensely rigid interlocking sills and doors and special burst-proof locks that are twice as strong as legally required. Longbridge. The directors of Austin Morris took an early chance to drive a camouflage metro and some of its competitors. There was a new atmosphere in the company generated by a new top management team that talked sense and took tough decisions. Metro had ceased to be just another new car. It had become a symbol of BL's new will to demonstrate its many skills in the international car market. A determination grew amongst everyone working on the project that they would make sure that Metro was significantly better than any of its competitors. Better, because it just had to be. Moulding, not handy for the Should we swing that around, yeah. For the stylists at work finalising the interior schemes, this challenge posed new demands to incorporate additional features requested by the marketing department to make each vehicle in the range exceptionally well specified and refined. Months and months were spent experimenting with different layouts and new materials before they were satisfied that each interior represented the very best of their creative talents. It depends on how many models we've got to spare to work on, sir. Meanwhile, the face of Longbridge had dramatically changed. By the end of 1978, two and a half years of major construction work was virtually completed. Westworks, the site of the new body assembly plant, alone cost 26 million pounds and covered an area the size of 40 football pitches. In the car assembly building number one, another 16 million pounds was invested to house the three final assembly tracks that in total stretched more than half a mile. 
Everything had been planned to provide maximum space for efficient materials handling and operator comfort to ensure quality production. Organized by the company's own marketing experts, Metro faced its competitors at a secret car clinic. Statistically representative members of the motoring public were asked to assess and compare the major features of every vehicle, all of which had been identically prepared. Over three separate days, more than 400 people took part, and the positive response to the new car more than justified all the time, money and talent that had been ploughed into the Metro project. The only anomaly was that people simply could not believe that a car of its size had so much more interior space than its larger competitors. By mid-1979, the development engineers could enjoy the benefits of another huge BL investment, the Gaydon Test Track. The fact that Metro was using the same engines and running gear as ADO 88 meant that years of mechanical development work by the engineering department had come through unscathed. Every aspect of the car was ruthlessly examined to try and discover any flaws in the vehicle's design or construction. It was the engineers' boast that they would discover every problem or potential problem that Metro possessed. From the time the design engineers had first laid pen to paper, expert quality engineers had been heavily involved. The group's quality function actually had power of veto over any aspect of design or manufacture which might undermine the eventual standard of the vehicle. Morning, had a hell of a job getting the bracket with intolerance. I mean, that was a hell of a game. Every fault that was discovered was thrashed out with the design and production engineers, even if it meant a considerable design change late in the program. In fact, he's asked us again to contact engineering to re-look at the whole tolerance of this part. The company's fixation about the high quality standards required for Metro extended far beyond the limits of its own factories. Every prospective component supplier was vetted by specialists from BL's own quality department. Production methods and inspection procedures were scrutinized, and if necessary, Improvements insisted upon before the supplier became even eligible to quote for Metro business. It's history and it's last check. By the summer of 1979, the installation and commissioning of the volume production facilities was in full swing. 80 million pounds worth of the best car making equipment that money could buy. The two automated body assembly lines would be each capable of producing a complete car shell every 42 seconds and would incorporate nine mini computers to control the processes, identify machine faults and automatically monitor quality at every stage of production. 28 robots, each capable of working to perfection, would make the company British leaders in this space age technology overnight. In order to monitor the accuracy of the finished bodies, a 3D measuring device was installed that would spot the minutest deviation of quality. It's so accurate, it had to be calibrated by laser. Apart from achieving outstanding levels of reliability, 
the engineers had many other notable successes to be pleased about, particularly noise levels. The development team had taken Metro's quietest competitor as the standard to beat. And although interior noise is not easy to stifle in small cars, they managed to make Metro substantially quieter even before they added a comprehensive sound deadening package. Another major breakthrough was the levels of fuel economy that were being achieved. Always conceived as an answer to the fuel crisis, Metro's economy had taken on an even bigger significance as the cost of petrol had nearly trebled during the vehicle's development. The target set for the HLE economy model was 60 miles per gallon at 50 miles per hour, and without seriously affecting the car's lively performance. Month by month, as different engine modifications were made, the consumption figures steadily improved until the target was not only reached, but comfortably beaten. With launch day now only nine months away, the huge warehouses of the parts division began to stock up with the thousands of component items needed to provide a worldwide spares backup for the new vehicle. An immense investment of over 10 million pounds to provide a fast and comprehensive service for owners wherever they might be. A wide selection of quality accessories was finalized for sale through the Unipart retail chain. Accessories that could turn an already extremely well-specified range into examples of individual luxury. Metro was already as trouble-free as it was humanly possible to make it. But still, the tests went on, just to make doubly sure nothing had been missed. In total, the whole test program lasted five years covered two million miles in five different countries. If any car had a tough beginning, it was Metro. And long before its launch, it was already being acclaimed by everyone from international car stylists to prospective fleet users. At Longbridge, as the production lines and assembly tracks were gradually commissioned, the vital task of training the hundreds of operators to build a quality vehicle began. Get it right first time became the motto of the production team. The last few months had seen the workforce swing behind some hard decisions taken by the people at the top. The mood of confidence and purpose that had begun in the boardroom had finally seeped through to the shop floor. And the new attitude won through just as Metro went into volume production in the most technically advanced plant of its kind in Europe.
British car to beat the world. Quality designed, quality developed, and quality built. Every engine computer tested. Every car mechanically tested on a rolling road. Every car water tested. Every car balloted and inspected to mint condition before it leaves the factory. And so Metro really is a very special car. Originally conceived as a realistic answer to a worsening world fuel crisis, Metro was developed to set a new standard for future trends in family transport. Cars that are smaller, lighter, fuel conscious, refined, and offering not just a large interior space, but space with the versatility to suit the varying needs of family motoring. More than that, Metro is living proof that BL still has the exceptional skills, talent, and ability to compete with the best of the world's motor industry.